Zen. You know, every one of us in this room can have hope. And this is the reason. God is love. He's a, he doesn't just love. He's love. And he's a merciful God. That means when you mess up, like you sin, the devil will tempt you and then he'll accuse you. Have you ever been tempted into something and then felt a massive guilt attached to it? Like it's your fault. You're no good. You're a mess up. You're, you're like, what? Oh, devil, you're turning on me now. You offer me the dope and then you call me a drug addict, a hopeless case. You put spirits of suicide on me. Oh, no, I see what you're trying to do. But I got good news for you. This place is not a place for you to be judged. There's a place to get some mercy, get some help. Come on, get some freedom, get a new beginning. Aren't you glad that is mercy triumphs over the judgment and the accusation and your failures? Jesus specializes in turning hopeless situations around. I... Some of you grew up in like really religious backgrounds and, and this is what it was. When you'd come into church, it was more of a guilt trip than a relief. This place is not here to put a guilt trip on you. Even if you came with your guilt, there's a place to relieve the guilt, set you free. Come on, receive forgiveness, receive a new beginning, receive mercy, receive grace. Let's give God some praise because he's a good God and he qualifies us. I'm going to pray. But if you're breathing today, you qualify for a touch of God today. Oh, pastor, you don't know what I did last night. You don't know the I, I understand. I understand the pain, the hurt, the suffering that you're going through. But if you need help, you don't have to talk God into helping you. He wants to help you more than you want to help yourself. Isn't that good you can receive? Come on, receive some help today. Father, we just thank you. Today's going to be a day of breakthrough. It's going to be a day of your supernatural power being manifested through this word with signs and wonders following. I'm asking you, Lord, speak through me today. I humble myself. There's, there's nothing for me to say without your spirit speaking through me today. Holy Spirit, you're our teacher. Teach us. We open our hearts today and we get rid of all distraction. We tune into this moment. We give, you've, you're giving us your undivided attention. We give you our undivided attention. And we're saying, God, speak. Speak to us. The same God that created the heavens and the earth. That said, let there be light. And there was light. And I just thank you, Lord, that right now you're speaking. And we're ready, Father, to hear what you have to say. And for some people, you're going to say, be free. For others, you're going to say, be healed. To others, you're going to say, be saved. Today's going to be their day. Just like you turned it on. Light came when there was darkness. There's going to be instant change in people's lives today. We give you all the honor and glory. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Love you guys. You may be seated. We're going to get into the word. Back in the 80s, we used to say, word up. <laughs> we're going to turn to a scripture, Matthew 20. And we're going to start with verse 29 through 34. And I'm going to give you a background. I'm going to give you the punchline right now. There's two blind men that this story is about. If you look up this portion of scripture, it would say Jesus healed two blind men. That's where the story would it'd have a title, Jesus heals two blind men. Um, in this city that they came out of Jericho, um, it, there was a lot, there was a high population of blind people that were there. And this is the reason. Um, in, that, in that area of Jericho, there was a bush or a plant that was there that was said to have medicinal value that it would actually, if you ate this plant, digested this plant, it would give you your sight back. 
So there was a lot of people that would come and travel that were blind to Jericho to partake of this bush. But this is what happens. A lot of them, it didn't help them. Maybe you had vitamins where it could help someone see a little bit better. But the blind mostly all remain blind. But there was these two blind men that decided the medicine didn't work. And I said, the, the drugs didn't work. The doctors didn't work. My psychiatrist didn't work. So I'm going to go ahead and give Jesus a shot. Because what they can't do, what your money can't do, what your friends can't do, what your lawyer can't do, we serve a God that he, Jesus, is the name to call on that's above every single name. And, and they decided at that moment, we're seeking after Jesus for our healing. And at the end, the punchline is they do get healed. And we're going to cover this story, and it's going to be two parts. Today I'm going to do a part, and then we're going to go to the second part. But I'm going to read the whole story to you, and you can see how it went down. In Matthew 20, verse 29, says this. As Jesus and his disciples left the town of Jericho, a large crowd followed behind. Two blind men were sitting beside the road. And you might be asking, what were they doing sitting by the road? They were doing exactly what someone does sitting by the freeway with a little sign, help me, I'm hungry. So they're most likely sitting by the road because they didn't have employment. They were sitting by the road begging. So they were used to begging for change and spare change. But this time they weren't begging for a spare change. They were begging and screaming for a breakthrough. Right now there's a group in here that you're ready for a breakthrough in your life. You're tired sitting at that corner begging for scraps and you're saying there has to be more to life than what I'm experiencing. I'm not experiencing change. It's not coming fast enough. I need a touch of Jesus. So when they heard that Jesus was coming that way, they heard Jesus was coming that way, you know what he's saying? They heard Jesus was coming their way. Jesus is still coming right now your way. A matter of fact, if you're in this room, Jesus is coming your way. He's making himself available to you right now. He's saying, do you have a need? I am ready to meet your need. Do you think I'm showing up for sport? I'm showing up to be God in your life. You know what that means? If you came here depressed and you came here hopeless and you came here hurt and you came here broken hearted, you didn't come to just diagnose your problem. You came for a touch. So this is what happened. They began shouting, Lord, son of David, have mercy on us. These were some crazy blind people. They were loud. There's a time in your life that you got to be so desperate that you don't care what people think. You don't know what I'm going through. You don't know the pain I've come out of. You don't know what I'm facing. So excuse me if I get a little light right now because I didn't come here to be entertained. I came, I didn't come for the lights. I didn't come for the, come on. I came to get a, a touch of Jesus Christ. I'm tired of being in this condition. Something has to change. Do you know why we don't get changed sometimes? We're too comfortable with our dysfunction. And why were two blind men hanging out? Because blind people hang around blind people. You know what that means? You hang out with the people that are most like you. But you know what the problem with that is? It can make you think that what you're going through is normal. It's normal in your circle, but it's not normal. 
You could justify the addiction. You could justify the anger. You could justify your crazy family. But God is saying, that's not the way I intended it for you to be. You could justify being lukewarm. You could justify, come on, not being committed to Jesus. But I'm telling you, there's a group of people that have made up their minds. I'm tired of living the way I've been living. I didn't come to church on Sunday to leave here the same way I came in. Jesus! Be careful that you're not so religious and prideful you can't get a breakthrough from Jesus. Why all this shouting? Why, why, why? I like quiet churches. Yeah, right. You didn't like quiet parties. You didn't like the quiet, come on, you didn't like the quiet music. Come on, you used to turn, can the, can the radio go up higher? And all of a sudden, when it comes to God, you're all quiet and dignified. And God is saying, come on, if you gave that to the devil, why don't you give me some praise so I can do something in your life? Have you ever praised God to the point you got on somebody's nerves? <laughs> all you want to do is talk about Jesus. Every time, everybody's going to talk about Jesus. It's all about the Bible. You always want to talk about going to church. What's going on? And Pastor Mark said this, and the Word of God says it. I, I, is that your whole life? Yes, it is. She, because before I came to God, there was a lot of stuff I used to talk about that was part of my wife life. And you were mad that I used to just talk about the Raiders and just talk about my weed and talk about my 40 ounce. But all of a sudden, I'm bringing in my answer what Jesus did for me. And now you're telling me, why don't you shut up? Why are you getting offended with my passion? All I'm saying, Jesus is coming back for a church that's on fire. Not a church that's quiet. A church that's saying, Jesus, we're desperate for you. Everybody's coming out of the closet. We're coming out too. Hey, we're here. How that look? There's a spirit of antichrist that's in this world. And it wants to shut up Christians. It wants you to be embarrassed of the power of the Holy Spirit. It wants you to be in dead professional churches where there's no power, there's no breakthrough, and demons don't tremble. But I'm telling you something, God is raising up a group of people that are desperate for a touch of God. And they're saying, I don't care how we look, we need the power of Jesus. Well, pastor, they don't take all that. Yes, it does. How do you expect to get a great miracle without great passion? It's time to get on fire. Fire spreads. Stop letting the devil spread his immorality in your life and start spreading some holiness. Come on, it's time for someone to make up their mind. I'm going to serve God and I'm not ashamed of this. I'm desperate right now. And I'm coming out of my circle to get a breakthrough. So the crowd responded. The crowd responded. What the crowd what? You know what that means? Be careful. That you're not so committed to pleasing the crowd, you can't serve God. I don't want to be different. I want to fit in. And what if they're gonna? What are they gonna say? They're gonna think I'm a radical. They're gonna think I'm too religious. They're gonna think I'm a Jesus freak. They're gonna, they're gonna think I'm a holy roller. Uh, if I speak in tongues, oh my gosh, what are they gonna think? They're gonna think I'm babbling. I'm crazy. I, and you plan to change the world? And you're ashamed of your Jesus? Come on, there's a, come on, they're going to try to shut you up, but there's a group of people that are saying, not me. 
I used to be ashamed. I used to be timid. But then the power of the Holy Spirit changed my life. And I got some twinkle in my eyes. I got some fire in my eyes. I got hope again. And I'm not going to sit here and act like Jesus didn't do something. I was a drug addict when I came to the house of God. And I am free. I'm telling you, God is real. Jesus is real. Jesus still raises the dead. He rose me from the dead. You think I'm going to keep... And you want me to shut up? You know what the devil wants to do? Shut up your praise. He loves churches that come together and pay twinkle toes. People are going to worldly concerts and dying. Some of, guys, some of you guys used to go to parties packing, ready for a fight. And now you come to church, you come to the house of God with no praise. You might have been intimidated. Come on. Come on, you were all, you, you used to go into places and say, where you from? And now to mention the name of Jesus, well, I don't know what they're going to think. Give it up inside. Ay, ay, ay. I, I tell you, we got to talk about Jesus. And we got to come out of the crowd and say, I might be walking with this crowd, but I'm not part of this crowd. This crowd has no power over me. I don't know if anybody else has a relationship with Jesus, but me, I'm telling you, I'm not going to be quiet anymore. I'm going to take Jesus outside the church, and I'm going to let somebody know who I serve. So, so, the crowd said, be quiet. The crowd yelled at them. Hypocrite. So you're, hold on. So you're telling me to be quiet because I'm yelling. But you're yelling at me to be quiet. So it's okay for you to yell, but it's not okay for me to yell. It's okay for you to give me your standards, but it's not okay for me to say my standards. It's okay for you to, come on, for you to, to tell me what you think, but I can't tell you what God thinks. Hypocrite. So it's okay for them to yell, but you can't yell. You could yell at your soccer game. You could yell at your football game. You could yell at your baseball game. You could yell at your wife. You could yell at your kids. You could yell at the dog. But when I start shouting and I start expressing my praise to God, you're offended by that. I think this is spiritual warfare. I think this has to do that you're being used by Satan to stop me from getting my breakthrough. Someone say resistance. Every time you get a vision, there will be resistance. I think, I, I think we don't even know we're in a battle. You're in a battle. Well, I made a decision. I'm going to start serving God. Okay, welcome to the battle. Because as soon as you start praising God, as soon as you make a decision to do what's right, everything that's against that will come against you. The fight will start within you. The start will start in your family. The start the crowd that used to be with you are going to start talking about you. What do you think? You're better than us? What happened? I'm not better than nobody. I'm just letting you know. I'm tired of being blind. It's time for me to get out of this thing. And if there's an answer to my problem, I'm tired of where my marriage is. I'm tired of where my life is. I'm tired of where my emotions are. And I know I've been hit and I've been knocked down. But it's time for me to get back up. And I know this, I can't get back up without Jesus. I love it. But, they, but the crowd yelled at them. The crowd yelled at me? I'm, I'm telling you, you start standing up for Jesus. And you get sold out for God. And you take, you take this message outside the church. I'm not, you don't become religious. You become loving, but you, I know your identity. 
I'm a Christian. I'm holy. I live for God. I made up my mind. I'm all in. I'm sold out. This is my lifestyle. And I'm letting you know, I live by the word. But that's old fashioned. <laughs> Men wrote that. All these oppositions. The truth is God's word is infallible. That means it has no mistakes. And if you live by it, it's perfect and it will lead you to success in every area of your life. That you apply it. The word of God is your owner's manual for every part of your life. And if you apply what the word of God says, 100% scientifically, it works. And if you don't live by it, it does not work. The, the mess you got in your life is a bad application. Well, these things keep happening to me. Why is it always happening? God, why are you allowing it to happen to me? And God said, I ain't allowing it to happen to you. You keep working a real bad plan real hard. Stop it. Stop doing your thing and start doing my thing. Isn't it time for you to finally make up your mind? I'm tired of doing it my way. What you need is forget your way and let's start doing it God's way. Be quiet, the, the, the crowd yell at them. What would you say? Be quiet. Oh, I didn't even know I need your permission to praise God, but, but you want me to shut up? You, you know what I'm going through? You know the losses I've experienced? You know the war that I've been going through in my family? And you know how I've been blind since I've been a little boy? I've been rejected. I've been begging on these streets for years. I've been strung out. I've been hurt. I'm depressed. I'm suicidal. And you're telling me to be quiet? I don't think you know who you're talking to. I'm fed up. I'm done. I'm, I'm desperate. But they only shouted, I love this. What'd you guys say? Be quiet? Oh, I hear you. Lord, son of David, have mercy. I'm taking it to another level. When the enemy comes against you, you let them know I'm not playing. You thought I was shouting then. Wait till I bring my praise out now. I'm going to another level. All I'm saying, train the devil. Don't you mess with me. If you thought I was praising God before, threaten me and see if my praise don't get louder or more obnoxious. Well, pastor, I'm not used to all this noise. I, I know. And this is what's going to happen. Either this is going to attract you or it's going to deter you. Which crowd do you belong to? Are you the blind man or are you the crowd trying to stop the breakthrough? And you know what happens when we become conservative? You know why we're conservative? I'm just more conservative. Yeah, you ain't. You're acting like you're more conservative. And I'll tell you why you're acting more conservative. Because your pride don't let you praise. You think you're self-made until all of a sudden your business plan don't work, your money gets a little funny, your marriage starts getting crazy, your kids start, come on, your kids start going wacko, all of a sudden you start realizing my plan doesn't work. And now the very people that you used to tell to be quiet and shut down and used to look for something a little more conservative. But when you need a breakthrough, you're going to come out to come into an atmosphere where you can cry out to God and say, God, I need it now. Well, pastor, calm down. I didn't say be quiet, just calmate, homie. No, I'm not going to calm down. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to calm down because I already got mine. I'm fighting for yours now. Come on. I already got my breakthrough. I'm fighting for your breakthrough. And I'm more excited, baby, than you are now. But I'm going to fight for you. No. 
Here we go. Here we go. Come on. Praise is breaking out in the house. Somebody, come on and say, I'm breaking out of the circle. I'm breaking out of the crowd. Jesus, Jesus. Shut up. Be quiet. Come on, give God some praise. Come on, we should be louder here than at the soccer game, the football game, because someone can get saved, delivered, and set free and receive the gift of eternal life. You may be, you may be seated. If you can. But they only shouted louder. Lord, son of David, have mercy on us. They, got, they started going gospel, I'm sure. Lord, have mercy, son of David, I need a breakthrough. You think you're going to shut me down? No. I've been blind since I've been birthed. But today, my breakthrough is walking my way. Is that going to be another Sunday, Sunday service? Today going to be my day to get my breakthrough, my turnaround. I'm telling you what, God is giving your Christian heritage back. Our Christian heritage is a heritage of fire. It's a heritage of miracles. It's a heritage of a God that parts the Red Sea. It's a heritage of a God that raises the dead. It's a heritage, it's a heritage of a God that heals and casts out demons. Hallelujah. But they shouted louder. All I'm letting you know, I'm not shutting down. There was a young man in our church that met a, another young adult in the gym this week. And he started talking about, about the church. And the young man said, what church? The guy goes, the way. He goes, oh, I hate Pastor Marco. I want to kill him. <laughs> say it to my face. <laughs> say it to my face if I don't cast that demon out of you. Say it to my face. Come on, if I don't seek the Holy Spirit on you. Come on, no weapon formed again. I'm not saying I'm going to fight you, but I'll fight you in the spirit. Okay, so the guy said, the guy said this, our, our member asked him, have you ever met Pastor Marco? He goes, no, I don't know him. I just hate him. And the guy said, you hate somebody you don't even know? That must come from another realm. I wonder who actually hates Satan in you. And he started recognizing, right, why would I hate him? I don't even know him. My bad. Understand, this is war. I love people. But I'm not going to be persuaded by people. I am not a politician. Come on, I am a child of God. I'm not here to win a crowd. I'm here to get you connected to my source. His name is Jesus Christ. I want you to know him personally and have a relationship with him. I'm not trying to talk you into something. I'm trying to get you connected to someone. I've been threatened more than once that people want to kill me. When we first started this church, I remember there was a young man. He just came from Mexico. And we had a service like this. And after service, we pray. 
Because we're not going to talk about the power of God. We're going to release the power of God too. Word and power. Word and power. So, so we start praying for him. And when I started praying for him, he fell to the ground. I said, Pastor, you push him? No, he got slain in the spirit. I said, Pastor, is that real? Okay, this is usually what it is. It's a clash of kingdoms. The kingdom of, kingdom of God crashes with the kingdom of darkness. I don't fall. Darkness falls. That's all it is usually. Bam. Clash. Bam. Whatever's been holding you, bam. Has to fall under the power of God. So he fell on the ground. I didn't touch him either. I didn't like push him. I just, in the name of Jesus, bam. Power of God hit him. Boom. Bing, bang, boom. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so he fell to the ground. And I felt the Holy Spirit says, go down with him. Pray for him in his ear. So I, say, I start saying, in the name of Jesus, this is your day of freedom. And his eyes popped open, the guy. But this time it wasn't him. It was a demon speaking to him. And the demon said to me, to my face. He says, I'm going to kill you, and I'm going to kill your family. I'm coming after you. Because of you, I am losing too many souls. And I, it's not me. It's this church. Come on. This church is invading hell, and we're saying you're not going to have our kids. You're not going to have our family. You're not going to have my husband. You're not going to have my wife. You're not going to have my hood. You're not going to have my city. We are invading hell, and we're saying you are coming with us. With hope, with love, with power. So, pastor, what'd you do? Well, this is what I did. What'd you do? This is what I did. Relax. And what's what I did? I said this. I spoke the word. I go, first of all, you ain't going to kill me. Because no weapon formed against me shall prosper. I told him like that. I gave him word. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. But this is what's going to happen. I'm going to I'm going to cast you out of him, and you're going to the pit of hell where you came from. I got authority in this thing. I serve a God that's real. And see, since he saved me, his spirit lives in me. So you can't do nothing to me. I don't belong to your kingdom. I belong to the kingdom of light. I've been transferred from the kingdom of darkness and fear and doubt. I don't believe your words. I don't receive your words. I cast you out. So the guy that was possessed began to scream. Ah, but you know what's crazy? The demon talked to me in English. And the guy only knew Spanish. So I thought the guy knew English. He didn't know English. He only knew Spanish, but the demon knew English. So I cast the demon out of him. And then I, said, and then I prayed, Lord, baptize him in the Holy Spirit. So what I did was I kicked out spirits. And we welcome the Spirit. The Holy Spirit. This was the craziest thing that happened in that moment. The Holy Spirit went inside of him and he started speaking in other tongues. And then he started prophesying. So God started speaking. The devil was speaking to him five minutes ago. Now the Holy Spirit speaking to him. And the Holy Spirit through him. And the Holy Spirit started speaking the church where it's going to be. What it's going to do, how it's going to save souls, how it's going to reach cities, and how the power of God is flowing. And what the enemy, see, the enemy had his mouth, but when God delivered him, now God had his mouth. And what I'm saying is it's impossible for you to have an encounter with God without God changing your heart, changing your dynamics, changing your thinking, changing your conversation, changing your results. Come on, someone give God some praise. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He did it for them. He did it for the blind man. He'll do it for you. We'll end it here. When Jesus heard them, when Jesus what? When Jesus, what? I'm going to tell you something. Song. Jesus hears you.
He sees you. Don't let the crowd intimidate you. Don't let this world intimidate your fire for God. Make up your mind. I'm done compromising. I'm done having one leg in the world, one leg in the church. I've made up my mind. I'm all in now. And there's nothing going to shut me up. And there's nothing going to take me off this course. I'm not just here for a blessing. I'm here for a life transformation. I'm not just here for my sight. I'm here for a new leader in my life. Is there anybody here that is saying, I just don't want God to fix my problem. I want God to begin to direct me. I've made up my mind. I'm tired of the devil leading my life. Pain leading my life. Depression leading my mind. Life, fear leading my life. I've made up my mind. Change has to happen. I'm here for my sight, but I'm also here for a new leader. The Lord heard him and he stopped and called, what do you want me to do for you? You got my attention. There's a big crowd making a lot of noise here. But I could, I'm attracted to your desperation and your passion. What do you want? What do you want me to do for you? You know what he's saying? I'm offering my help. You got my attention. What do you want? And these blind men were specific. You know why they got a breakthrough? Because they knew what they wanted. Do you know why some of us can't get a breakthrough? You don't even know what you want. You're sitting there in the front of the menu. I, I don't know. Well, tell you, sir, move to the side. Someone else know what they want. They want a number one. Will you make up your mind? And until you order, you don't get nothing. Come on. There's somebody here that has to make up their mind. I'm coming here for a breakthrough. I'm coming here because I want to know God better. I'm coming here because I want to be on fire. I'm coming here because I need a purpose. I'm coming here because my kids are lost. I'm coming here because my heart is broken. I'm coming here right now because I need a touch of Jesus. I'm I have a purpose. Ask me again what I want. I will not change my mind. My prayer is still the same until I got it. So, ¿qué quieres? We want to see. We want to see. We've never seen. We want to see. Lord, we want to see. Jesus loved them. He felt sorry for them. And touched their eyes. And instantly, they could see. And not only they could see, they now followed him. They just didn't get their breakthrough. See, some of you are going to get a breakthrough today. You're going to get a touch of Jesus. But the purpose that Jesus is touching you, he's not just touching you because he loves you. He's touching you because he wants to convert you. I know your need brought you here. Your blindness brought you here. Your pain brought you here. But God is saying, I just don't want to heal your pain. I just don't, come on. I just don't want to set you free from the thing that's been holding you back. But I want you to finally make up your mind. I'm tired of living God, living life my way. I made up my mind. Jesus, if you'll touch me right now, I promise you, I'll serve you and I'll follow you for the rest of my life. They followed him. It's all stand up. I know you want more. I know, I know. You guys going to have to read the Bible at home. All praise the Lord. I'll tell you this. I I, I'm not coming to the house of God and preaching to get a nice internet message. I don't go on the internet and, and download the latest sermon on Sermon Spice. I see God. Because you need a real word from God. And you just don't need a word from God. You need to fire the Holy Spirit. You need, a, you need power. I, I think sometimes we don't know that we're spiritual warfare. 
there's a real devil. And I'm, I'm saying, there's a real devil wants to confuse you, take over your mind, take over your values, take over your identity. He wants to make you think you're somebody that you're not. He doesn't want you to discover, even as a believer, the power and authority that you have. He wants to keep you on the outskirts. He wants to keep you lukewarm. He wants to keep you worldly. He's saying, no, don't you be holy. Don't you sell out to God. Because if you sell out to God, God's power is going to work in your life. It's going to transform your family. It's going to transform your marriage. It's going to transform your kids. I made up my mind a long time ago. I'm all in. And I'm going to talk for, I just want to say, I want to apologize for every leader that misrepresented Christ in your life. That hurts you. Used you. I want to say this to my African-American brothers and sisters. Our Hispanic brothers and sisters. And the reason I want to say this is because we've had a lot of dysfunction in our leadership. And your heritage. I say, African-American brothers and sisters, your heritage is fire. Gospel music came from you. Come on, while there was slavery, there was a group of young men and women that say, I know you might be right now torturing me and taking advantage of me, but there's a praise still in my mouth and you can't stop that. I'm still free. And they began to sing spirituals. I'm prophetically speaking. So what happened, our leadership let us down. And we're saying, man, I guess you can't have fire and integrity. So what I'll settle for is a whitewashed version of my worship. But at least I'll be safe. But I'm going to tell you this. God is saying, I got your heritage right here. Come on. Come on, those gospel songs. Come on, your heritage. Come on, I'm resurrecting it now as a weapon for these last days. You are not a victim. I'm going to use you as a weapon. Come on, but I need your praise. Come on, is anybody here? Come on, say, God, I want it back. Fire. And this is all I'm saying. Church, you can have integrity and fire. We're going to get it back. And I'll tell you this. This is a place of holiness. No scandals in the leadership. Because we made up our minds. We're going to serve Jesus and represent him. But we're not going to give up our Pentecostal on fire background. We need, come on, we need the touch of God. Come on, revival needs to come back to his church. You know what's happening? People are tired of playing church. I don't want to come for a little sermon. Lee. Oh my God, let's go have some, some, some Denny's. And I got real problems at home. I got demonic stuff happening at home. My kids are lost. Our marriage is messed up. I'm watching porn at night. I'm addicted to drugs. I got a secret life. I'm tired. Oh, real fire. This is going to happen here. I'm saying, it's happening now. Let's thank God for the prophetic word that God is speaking right now. Come on. It's a, I'm restoring, I'm restoring, I'm restoring. Everything I started, I'm going to finish. Okay. If you're sick, the Bible says, these signs will follow those that believe. They'll lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. It is said they might recover. We hope they recover. They will. Shall. Well, God is in what's God's will for you to recover. So if you need healing, come up real quick. Go pray. Worship. I mean, altar team, come on. You need healing, come up right now. Come on. Someone got a diagnosis and the doctors can't fix you. But came up, King Jesus can fix you. You're like the blind man. You came here desperate for a touch of God. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand. God's gonna heal somebody.
Okay. The second group, you're depressed. There's a spirit of depression, suicide, anxiety, and fear on you. And I'll even say this confusion. You don't even know what to do. You feel like you're stuck. The joy is here, but when you go home, the depression meets you at the door. If you're depressed, anxiety, fear, worry, come up and we're going to pray for you to get set free from that. That's a spirit of the devil. I'm not giving you a spirit of fear. Come on, let's call it what it is. It's a demon. We're not going to be doing no apologetic uh, uh, calls here no more. If you're not desperate enough to get out of your seat and come forward, th th there needs to be more desperation built up. But I'm telling you right now, you got to break out of your comfort zone and say, I, right now, I need a breakthrough right now. I need a touch from Jesus right now. <laughs> Hallelujah. God understands. You don't need no perfect prayers. You just need to pray. Love you. Love you guys. Come on, church. We're going to come against anxiety and depression, suicide, ugly spirits, dark spirits, addiction. If you're addicted, leave your seat, come up here right now. We're going to come against a spirit of slavery and addiction in the name of Jesus. I got you. I'm with you. There it goes. Release it to the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay. One more group. There was a group that followed Jesus. It was the first group. The Bible says the disciples followed Jesus. The crowd followed Jesus. And then the desperate followed Jesus. But the goal is to be a disciple. A disciple is someone that has placed their faith in Jesus. They're not just coming for healing. They've made up their mind. I'm tired of being lukewarm. I want to give my life to Jesus and I'm ready to surrender it all right now. I want to I want to be all in with Jesus. Come on. It's time for you. It's kind of like you've been hovering around the fence and you're not happy because I do know this. A believer that's not totally committed is miserable. It's time for you to surrender your whole life to the Lord and say, Jesus, not only be my Savior, but be my Lord. And it's time for you to get baptized. I'm ready. Come on. Who's out there and you're saying, man, I don't need to know if I'm right with God. But I want to get right with God. I want to be saved today. I want to be set free today. Leave your seat and come up here right now. Come on, someone's coming right now. Someone's done. Someone's selling out right now. You heard enough of God's word. It's time for you to respond. Hallelujah. Freedom. Power, probably. Power. From the back row, all the way up here. Power. God loves you, bro. Okay. Buy your heads for a second. Oh, Rabba Satara Oh, Rebbe Rabakai. Oh, Shendere Rebbe Katarabasai. Fire of your Holy Spirit. Touch your sons and your daughters right now. Right now. I'm going to speak. I'm going to count. I like this what I'm going to do. I'm going to come against the spirit of anxiety. Who's dealing with anxiety? Raise your hand real quick. One. Two. Three, I see anxiety, anxiety there, boom, I see that, okay? 
Get ready. Are you ready for freedom? Okay. When I count to three, this is what I want you to do. Say this with me. Those that are dealing with anxiety and depression, who's dealing with depression? Raise your hands. Okay. Say this with me first, and then we're gonna, I'm going to do something. Say, Jesus, I confess you as my Lord and Savior. I repent of all my sins, and I renounce the spirit of anxiety, depression, and suicide. Get out of my life. Okay, now, I'm going to count to three. And when I count to three, I'm going to command that spirit that's been messing with you to leave you right now. Get ready. Unclean spirit, I'm speaking to you right now. You're going to leave their minds. You're going to leave their bodies. You're going to leave their, they're going to leave their families. One. Two. And when I say three, that spirit is leaving. One, two, three. Go. There goes, there goes, there goes, there goes, there goes. There goes in the name of Jesus. Ghosts. Ghosts. Depression. Go right now in the name of Jesus. Suicide, darkness, go right now in the name of Jesus. Spirit of darkness and oppression, I command you, let her go. Okay. Okay, now. Who needs healing? You're sick. You need healing. Who needs healing? Raise your hand. You need healing. Raise your hand. Okay. The Bible says we'll lay hands on the sick to recover. We're going to believe for your healing right now. Say, Pastor, how does that happen? We obey the word of God. Signs and wonders follow us. Okay, right now. Jesus, by his stripes, you were healed. You don't have to earn the healing. You don't have to get right to get it. Just receive it right now. Ready? I want everybody to raise your hand. Raise your hand if you need healing. I want every single person, if their hands are raised, I want you to touch them. I don't want nobody, nobody not being touched. They need healing. Make sure they're, they're having a point of contact. There we go. When you're touching them, you're, you're just being accident. The Holy Spirit got Jesus touching them. That's all. Get ready. You're going to come back with testimonies. Jesus is going to do it right now. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I command every spirit of sickness, infirmity, cancer, diabetes, emphysema, I command you in the name of Jesus, go. Let them go. I, I detach you from their bodies right now in the name of Jesus. Free. Healed. Infirmity, sickness, darkness, go. There it goes. There it goes. There it goes. There it goes. Come on. God says, I'm with you. There it goes, Mama. God says, I'm with you. You're not alone, Mama. There it goes. There it goes. There it goes. Come on. I come against every spirit that attaches to her, to her mind. In the name of Jesus. That's it. Go. Let her go. That's, I know. I know. Let her go. Let her go. I need a young lady over here. In the name of Jesus. Let her go. Let her go. Go. That, that spirit's leaving you, mama. That spirit has been tormenting you. You're leaving right now. You're going to the pit. I detach you from her. I break every generational curse off of her now in the name of Jesus. You're not going to attack her mind anymore. Go. Okay, God's doing it. Come on, setting you free. Stay right here. Stay right here. Stay right here. I need, matter of fact, hallelujah. Lisa, come right here. Come right here. We got to continue praying with her. God's setting her free. Okay. Okay. Let's give God just a little praise right now. Come on, he's doing some work right here. Come on, if you're getting set free. Okay. Come on. No more dead church. Come on. We are here to get a connection with Jesus. He's alive. He works. What? How do you know? How do you know you've been converted? It's changing you. Church should be a highlight for you. I can't wait to get to the house of God. Amen. Let's pray for salvation right now. Come on. I want to be saved. I want to be forgiven. I want eternal life. I'm ready to repent of my sins and put my faith in Jesus Christ. I'm done living a double life. I'm serving Jesus. Repeat after me. Say, Jesus, I ask you now, forgive me. I believe you died on the cross to be punished for the wrong I've done. I accept you now as my Lord 
and Savior. Forgive me, cleanse me, set me free, and fill me now with your Holy Spirit. I am saved. I'm born again. I receive the free gift of eternal life. Amen. Let's thank the Lord. Fill him with your spirit of fire. Church, I'm just telling you, God is moving. Let him move through you. We're going to continue praying. Um, Tuesday, we're going to be in our downtown campus, bringing a bridge of love for the community and introducing to Jesus. And Wednesday night, Wednesday night, Friar Revival. You want to be here on our Wednesday night services? Come next Sunday. God is doing something here at the Wayward Hours. But let God use you. Pray for people. Help them. Love them. Go out there and show Jesus to a hurt and broken group. And be bold in Jesus' name. Someone needs your boldness. Love you. Remember that if God's for you, there's no one can come against you. Love you guys. Love you. Love you. I'll be here praying for some people. And we're getting ready for our Spanish service. Starts at 1 o'clock.